Marlon's acting career spanned 60 years. He won two Academy Awards for Best Actor. The first came in 1954 for his portrayal of Terry Malloy, a young boxer convinced to take a fall in On the Waterfront. His famous line from the movie, I could have been a contender, is still current in the cultural lexicon. His second Oscar was awarded in 1973 for his role as Vito Corleone in The Godfather, one of the most memorable film characters of all time. Though he refused to show up to receive his gold statue, he is still the winner of record. All of today's actors have at least a little bit of Marlon in their creative DNA. Beyond acting, Marlon's persona, on and off screen, is said to have contributed to a change in the very notion of manhood in America. Before Marlon, the model American hero was embodied by actors like John Wayne and Kirk Douglas, swaggering, confident, loyal, honest, responsible, unwavering, unwilling to show feelings of any sort. Marlon became the archetype of a new kind of hero, the anti-hero, an ever more complex male figure for ever more complex times, conflicted, vulnerable, primitive, flawed, selfish, pansexual, an esthete living his own truth, long before anyone ever termed the expression. Marlon's portrayal of the gang leader Johnny Strabler in The Wild One has become ubiquitous as both a symbol of rebelliousness and as a fashion statement. Motorcycle jacket, tilted cap, jeans, white t-shirt, and sunglasses. At the time of the movie, Johnny's character inspired a worldwide craze for sideburns, a style picked up by James Dean and Elvis Presley, and pretty much all of the male population of the world. Dean copied Brando's acting style extensively. Presley used Brando's image as a model for his famous role in Jailhouse Rock, 1957. In addition, according to cultural critic Linda Williams, Brando was an early lesbian icon who, along with James Dean, influenced the butch look and self-image among lesbians in the 1950s and after. Marlon was also a pioneer for celebrity activism at a time when celebrities were afraid to speak out, lest they be blackballed by big movie studios and derided by the movie ticket-buying public. He was among the earliest to raise the alarm about climate change. In 1994, on an episode of Larry King's talk show, Marlon disclosed that he'd signed with a company designed to reduce the CO2 in the earth in order to preserve it for your grandchildren and for mine. And, of course... There was his refusal to accept his Godfather Oscar in 1973 in protest of Hollywood's portrayal of Native Americans. Forty-three years later, in 2016, African-American actors, in reaction to a second straight year of an all-white slate of Academy Award nominees, embarked on a protest hashtagged Oscars so white, calling out the lack of representation of people of color in Hollywood. At that time, the popular actress Jada Pinkett Smith was quoted as saying she'd found affirmation for her own decision to boycott the Oscars by watching a clip of Sasheen Littlefeather's 1973 appearance at the Oscars on Marlon's behalf. Today, of course, the era of shut up and shoot the ball is long over. Celebrities are at the forefront of all social and cultural movements. They are expected to be there. In many ways, Marlon's history has been America's history. In every way, he has been a forerunner. According to the film critic Pauline Kael, beginning in the 1950s, Brando represented the ultimate rebel, a reaction against the post-war mania for security. As a protagonist, the Brando of the early 50s had no code, only his instincts. He was a development from the gangster leader and the outlaw. He was antisocial because he knew society was crap. He was a hero to youth because he was strong enough not to take the crap. Marlon represented a contemporary version of the free American. He is gone, but ever with us.